colleagues. My name is Possible, and I'll be your tutor for today. In our previous lecture, we did definition of demand. Today, we are going to look at the law of demand. All right. Now, in our previous lecture, we said that demand is different from want. Why am I saying that? Because demand is backed by a purchasing power. But wants is not backed by a purchasing power. So we also said that if you want to define demand, you have to bring the willingness of consumers. And then the ability, which is the purchasing power. Willingness backed by the purchasing power. Today is of no exception. We are going to look at the law of demand. Now the law of demand says that the higher the price of a commodity, the lower, so the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. Are we there? And then, and the lower the price, the lower the price of a good, the higher the quantity demanded. All things will equal. Now from this definition, we could see that when price is increasing, quantity demanded comes down. And when price is decreasing, quantity demanded goes up. From this small example, we could see that there is a negative relationship between price of a commodity and the quantity demand. So looking at the analysis, we can say that, so analysis, under the analysis, we can say that when price goes up, quantity demanded comes down. And when price comes down, quantity demanded goes up. I hope it makes sense. So looking at this one, we could see that there's an inverse relationship. Inverse. Inverse or negative, negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. I hope it makes sense. So there is an inverse relationship or a negative relationship between quantity demanded and and we are saying that this law of demand is possible because of two things. Because of two things. One is what is called substitution effect. One, the law of demand is possible because of two things. One is substitution effects and the other one is income effects income effect now under the substitution effect we are saying that when a price of a commodity increases when a price of a particular commodity increases whilst the other commodities remain the same or remains cheaper as a consumer now remember that one of the ten principles of microeconomics is that consumers are rational and they think at the margin. They respond to incentives. Now, once we know that that is a principle or one of the ten principles of microeconomics, we are saying that when price increases, price of a particular commodity increase, once the other commodities remain the same, consumers or rational consumers will leave the commodity whose price has increased and go and patronize or consume the other commodity whose price remains the same and if it happens like that we could see that the quantity demanded of the of the quantity demanded of the commodity whose price has increased will decrease and if it happens like that it is supporting the law of demand now vice versa right now the income effect says that Sometimes the income of the consumer also determines the quantity of commodity that the consumer will be consuming. Now, if my income is 20 Ghana cities and I'm consuming 400 units, and my income remains constant or change, once the price of the commodity that I'm consuming increases, automatically my 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 income will not be able to purchase the 400 units that I used to buy. So we are saying that income effects, when price increases, it 
lowers the rare income at hand the disposable income of the consumer at hand it lowers it when we say it lowers it it means that the money of the consumer in the pocket becomes small to consume the units that he or she was consuming previously when the price had not changed so we are saying that income effects also has an implication on the law of demand i hope it makes sense having understood this one and having gotten to know that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demand in our next lecture we are going to put things on the board this is theory in economics we have theory and we have a model now the theory is the written aspect of the economics and the model is a diagrammatical tabular and mathematical expression or representation of the economic theory so having understood this one in our next lecture we are going to look at how to represent the entire theory on economic model so we are going to look at we are going to look at um, demand shadow demand curve and then we look at the demand function once again my name is possible and god bless you for following our lecture make sure to watch the next one bye bye